So for more on all of this and what we do know right now, let's bring in Tobias Elwood, who is UK Conservative Member of Parliament for Bournemouth East, and he is in Dorset in the south of England right now. So, Mr Elwood, thank you for joining us. What exactly do you know as a member of the Conservative government about what is actually been agreed to right now? Well, I'm hearing the same mood music as you, and I think everybody is elated. We still need to wait for that big announcement that you touched on, a historical announcement. It's been such a long journey, four years. Uh, we know what it means to uh, depart the EU, but where you land as a deal was always unclear. So I'm really pleased that uh, common sense prevailed. This was all about political courage, I think, at the end of the day. A number of deadlines were passed throughout the summer, taking us up to this point here. Uh, so I'm really pleased. Let's wait for the details itself. But, you know, there were 98 percent there, as we've heard time and time again, that arguments over the last 2 percent. It seems that a deal has been struck over fishing. We'll have to wait to see what is to do with quotas or zones or indeed a time frame that uh, might be linked to that agreement. But I think everybody will be relieved that we're avoiding no deal. What is the plan for the members of the Conservative Party? Has the Prime Minister been in touch about a potential meeting, a phone meeting? Do you know when you'll be briefed? No, you're right to say that there is now a process that needs to go through to make sure that we ratify this deal, likely to expect a recall of Parliament. Today, we're just coming to terms with another change in the COVID uh, dimensions here, with new tiering and lockdowns taking place. So we're just uh, digesting that news. But I know that colleagues will be welcoming this uh, where we are today. You know, whatever your views were on Brexit, however you voted back in that referendum in 2016, nobody suggested or thought we'd end up actually sailing so close to no deal. But uh, Mr Elwood, big... can I just ask how you can be so excited when you don't precisely know what David Frost, what Prime Minister Boris Johnson have actually agreed to yet? Are you not concerned that you may not like what's been agreed to? No, what I, I'm aware of is what has been agreed on aviation, on energy, on security, nuclear cooperation, data security, how Gibraltar will be operated from. All these things have been agreed. This issue to do with fishing is an important uh, aspect politically, but actually it was a matter of common sense prevailing. We catch a lot of fish. We sell it to the EU. How can we make sure that there is an agreement that keeps everybody happy? So absolutely, we want to look at the detail. We'll get an opportunity to do that. But my concern, the bigger concern, was that we were going to enter 2021, where we, Britain is uh, president of the G7, and we are hosting the biggest uh, climate change comet, uh, summit in history. And yet, here we would be backing away from our closest allies on the continent. I'm glad we've avoided that, and we can look into the new year with, I think, a, a sense of optimism. What will you do if you find out that the access to EU waters that EU boats have goes beyond what you anticipated, or indeed that the rights to impose retaliatory tariffs in the future on the part of the EU are again beyond what you would be comfortable with? Is there any mechanism for an opposition vote on your behalf or on any other MP's behalf here? I think you're placing so much importance on fishing, and there's well, no doubt that is that's the only thing that's, uh, that's, that's, that's caused the delay for so long, so rightly so, no? Uh, yes, but also you have to remember what you'd be throwing away uh, if you didn't accept a deal. I've had every confidence that the Prime Minister would end up with a deal, but it would be tough. There would be a lot of uh, 11th hour negotiations right up to the wire, as we saw here. But ultimately, as, uh, as I've said publicly many, many times, the damage to Britain, reputationally and economically, would have been colossal. Uh, let's look for the details. Absolutely right. Until I see it, it's difficult for me to, to speculate. You do seem to have a lot of trust in the Prime Minister, at the very least, to do the right thing on behalf of the British people. And, of course, Europe also will have to be briefed and also will have to vote. Each individual country will vote. Uh, you mentioned lockdowns a little bit earlier on. More lockdowns announced from Matt Hancock, the Health Secretary, this morning, including counties around yours. Just want to ask you about the controversy of you going to London and having dinner the other day. Uh, anything you'd like to say in terms of the lockdowns? lockdown and the fact that we're at peak hospitalization in Britain now since May. Well, you're referring to an event that took place when we're in a tier two position. Well, I, I went Dorset to... was in a tier two. London was already beyond that. Uh, well, no, I was working in London. I was working from London. I'm, I'm a key worker. Therefore, uh, as with others, we are allowed to operate uh, in Parliament as, as I was doing. 
Um, and in, in fact, at that point, London was not in, in lockdown. You're incorrect. Uh, London was in, in, in uh, a different category, which allowed this event to take place at a military establishment. These military establishments followed the letter by the law. It was actually uh, on the invitation of the Iraqi embassy to meet Iraqi personnel and understand what's going there. We have uh, uh, UK troops still in Iraq. The situation there is deteriorating, and uh, that's the reason why I attended that event. And very finally, Mr. Elwood, any concern that because this, uh, this agreement that looks like it might be announced later on today is coming at the Christmas period, which is extraordinarily busy and it's family time and, and people are a little bit distracted, that that, that, that might leave Britain a little bit, uh, you know, at a loss uh, for, uh, you know, the amount of time to give it scrutiny? Well, it is important to give it scrutiny. The role of Parliament must never be forgotten, and uh, that will happen. The, when we departed for the Christmas break, it was made very clear to all members of Parliament, be ready to be recalled back, perhaps between Christmas and the New Year, to make sure that we can go through the ratification process. We've yet to actually get the deal confirmed yet, so there's an awful lot of hurdles, many hurdles to get through. But the big stumbling block, we understand, uh, has been overcome, and that is brilliant news, I think, for Britain, for the continent as well, and indeed for our wider perspective uh, and working with the United States. Let's not forget, there's a new occupant of the White House. They want to you know, reinvigorate Western resolve to take on some of the bigger challenges around the world. Britain needs to, wants to participate in that. We couldn't have done that, I think, effectively, if we didn't have a deal with, uh, with the European Union.